Hello, World Civ uh, 106. Uh, welcome to week two. Um, I had uh, a, a few of, of you kind of have a little panic attack on me, which I understand. And uh, many of you that have been able to contact me are, are getting it down really quick and, and uh, uh, the work's looking great. Um, I've mentioned this to some of the other students. Um, some people, are, some of you are messaging me through the Gmail or I mean the email, which is legitimate. It's just that they really can get lost emails sent to me when I when they're kind of bunched up. And if you write directly to Canvas, um, Canvas does this great thing where it, it lets me know not just who you are, but which class you're in because I have three different classes. And there's a little like light on the icon that tells me I missed a message or not. So it makes it easier for me to make sure that I'm going to get to you um, and not skip over any important message that you might you know, question or issues you, want, you have. So I want to mention that. Um, sometimes when I post other videos, there can be um, copyright issues or something that happens on YouTube and it for whatever reason, the video is uh, um, no longer available um, or it's just not working. Um, keep in mind that that doesn't mean that you no longer have to do any notes on that video. I may even switch to another documentary or another lecture. So if you're doing all of your notes last minute and it doesn't work, I may let you um, resend and, and, and give me the notes later and make up the points, but that assignment doesn't go away. So uh, every video requires notes that I have posted. And as I've mentioned, for a reason, because I want you to watch them and I want you to reflect on the information. Most of you are understanding that very well. There's still a little confusion about that somewhat. And this is the only the second week. So understand that. The other thing that I need to mention is remind you that we're in a cram course setting. And I start off the week always, you know, some weeks are busier than others. Uh, there's usually, but often you'll have two weeks put into one with the way our class is set up right now. And so I like to start you off just with a, a normal amount of work so that you can get used to the routine and see what to expect but I'm, I, I'm sure that a lot of you right now are already forgetting that we started this class late. And I'm required as your professor to still teach you everything um, that uh, this course covers within a shorter amount of time. And so um, you're going to need to budget and manage your time um, differently from now on. Now, there's something else I need to point out. So... I had to rearrange this class to fit in this timeline. And, I, and, 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 and this also goes this information for those of you who've had me before because I never really set it up like this. And my formatting, if you, when you go to the module for this week, you'll see that I have a, um, a Mesopotamia section and then an Egypt section. And I separate the assignments from each other. Now, every once in a while, I'll, I will have already, uh, I'll bring the entire two-week uh, uh, set of information into one week. So, like, when we do Judaism and uh, ancient Israel and Judaism, which I separate usually, and, uh, um, they will come together, and you'll just have a normal, like, turn-in work on Thursday for, for the whole thing and on, on Sunday. Well, you'll notice this week that I have some uh, notes and assignments that are due Thursday for the Egypt, I mean, sorry, for the Mesopotamian one, I believe. And then if I think if you look at the Egypt, you have separate notes and separate discussion, which are due all on Sunday. So I want you to just kind of look that out. It's, it's sounding maybe a little bit confusing or intimidating right now. It's not that, it's actually quite straightforward. Um, it's just something that I want you to pay attention to and realize that um, you're doing two different sections in one week and I'm breaking up the work. I'm separating the work sections and the, and the due dates, okay? If there's any question on that, just please contact me. We'll figure it out together. But um, you should be able to note, you know, it shouldn't be that difficult. It's just, again, you don't want to do this stuff last minute, okay? You should start on it, like, working on these things as, as soon as possible, if you can. Um, 
let me see. I'm looking at here to make sure. Uh, um, oh, yeah. There's the other thing I want to mention. I still haven't been able to figure this out or resolve this yet with Canvas. Every time I ch teach a class, I transfer the shell into the next semester. Um, and so basically, I, I, I've been teaching this class for a while. And all I have to do is just move the, the videos and the assignments into the current semester. But in the Canvas grade section, it keeps all of my assignments that I have, have ever assigned, even when I get rid of some or change them. So it's almost like a graveyard of my assignments. And it can be confusing for you if you're looking on your grades and you're seeing these assignments that I didn't, that weren't in the module and you might think you're behind or you're like, whatever. That, don't worry about that part. Um, the assignments that are in the, in, the, in, the, in the module section for each week are all you need to worry about. Okay? Clear? So only do those assignments. Again, if you have any questions on that, let me know. And um, this, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I think you're going to really love finding out all this information. It's exciting. Ancient Mesopotamia and the flood myth. I mean, many of you are going to be blown away on that if you're not, if you're not already aware about this. Um, looking at ancient Egypt, I think I really do a unique coverage of ancient Egypt because I don't just give you the pyramids time period. I actually talk about it as, as it evolved. I mean, ancient Egypt is huge. So huge. And, you know, how many people even realize that in the early years of Christianity, Egypt was a major player of Christianity, a major influence on Christianity. And uh, that's the first translation of the Bible ever made uh, uh, in the Greek language, what was done in Africa, in Egypt. I talk about that in Egypt. Um, fascinating, right? So how did we get from, uh, you, you know, get to those places? Um, I'm actually grabbing a book. I just thought to do this right now. Oops. Okay. When I was in Leiden uh, a few months ago in the Netherlands, it's called Christianizing Egypt. This is a really fascinating book. And had I found this book earlier, I would have tried to incorporate this into some of the lectures. But this was a lot of new information to me. And it was basically covering this, this, this discussion. It's a religious studies text. At what point do people who practice all these various religions, when, when, when they convert officially to a, a different religion and a nation, like when the government says, okay, this is what we're going to doing now, how does that transformation actually take place? And um, it's fascinating fascinating uh, um, stuff. So just want to recommend that book. Yeah, so that's also, that's by David Frankfurter. Okay, if you didn't catch that. Uh, um, it's Princeton Tech uh, Publishing. Um, so uh, this has already been kind of a long, uh, longer announcement, so I won't tell you as much about the Philippines as, as I was um, uh, learning from, uh, I mean, as I was telling to my other classes. And there's different things I had. Could, I mean, I could talk about many things in that trip. What I just want to mention is this then, since we're talking on the theme of religion, so I'll just say that. It's interesting that I've been living here in a majority Buddhist nation um, uh, in Thailand. And it's been fascinating to see that. And what I've been learning about the Southeast Asia, and I'm going to talk about this again later uh, with Buddhism, uh, uh, but animism or the belief in spirits and this uh, unwritten, you know, these kind of uh, folk religious ideas that are not put into writing have dominated this uh, region for who knows how long. Probably prehistoric, uh, if you will, you know, if you want to put it that way. And then Buddhism from India, right, 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 originally, is coming with the text, a textual tradition. Islam comes into this area with a textual tradition. Uh, tradition. And then... Um, uh, also, Hinduism, by the way, at, uh, at one point was was a, was out in this region, very dominant, and still has some influence, like on the the monarchy here in Thailand. And then uh, Christianity ends up conquering the uh, a good chunk of the Philippines through Spanish conquest, not peacefully. And this is the interesting part. Islam is a majority religion in the south of the Philippines. And right now, there's a lot of violence and tension there. When I was there, a church was just blown up in the, in the, in the northern part of the south, uh, a, a Christian church. 
And um, there's definitely a lot of Islamophobia uh, intention on that this topic when I was in the Philippines. But Islam came peacefully to much of the Southeast Asia through missionary work. Christianity came into the Philippines through violence and conquest. And um, even after the people were actually really believing in it, and you had indigenous, uh, you had native uh, Filipinos that were priests that were being discriminated against uh, by the Spanish. I mean, the Spanish rule there is quite interesting, the way that 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 legacy has panned out in the Philippines. And that was very eye-opening for me, and and to see that firsthand. But I will say this, um, it's a very, very sincerely Christian nation, uh, the Philippines. I, I mean, it really matters to people. I went with my daughter's uh, second cousin. Her, um, he's pastorly. He's an evangelical pastor, and he is a chaplain for the police department. And I think he really sees himself as a community activist. That that if the police follow uh, a Bible-based Christianity, that they will stop selling drugs and be a part of the corruption problem, which is really being cracked down on by their current president, who's literally killed thousands of people. And it's and, the, and tallying some there are saying it's like 70 or something a day, 30, 70 a day. I mean, they don't really know, I think, but um, there's an intense time to be in the Philippines. There's a lot of, um, you know, the corruption there and the drug problem and even police are being targeted by this president. If, 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 you, if you are caught selling drugs or doing drugs, things do not go well for you and often death um, and not much of a trial. Uh, either it's, it's quite intense and um, infrastructure oh so many things I just had just my brain was just melting when I was there I, I had a great time with the people the family was super hospitable to me and I loved it I, I love I love Thailand but you know you see the world and you see how unevenly economic development has been taking place how many elites so corrupt just pillage their own nation I think about America Flint, Michigan, when an unelected official poisoned the water for the entire population there and got away with it. I started to think, is this really, you know, we look at the Philippines and Thailand and we, and we, we you know, I could tell you stories, you'd, be, you'd say, what? But then I look at my own country's got this problem, right? So just some, so many things to think about and contemplate. In any case, I hope you enjoy all the stuff that you're learning in this class. And um, I'm sorry if uh, I went off too uh, long in this announcement. Um, Please feel free to ask me any question uh, uh, if there's anything you need. And uh, we'll be in touch. Have a great week.